Hello, and welcome to this interview with Lothar Troller, one of our artists presently on display at the Alpha Art Gallery's current exhibition, Shift Nature. We will be going over some of his artistic process as well as the pieces graciously contributed to both our physical and online presentations. And we'll start off uh, pretty simple. Lothar, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. And it's the weekend coming up, so it can't be better. <laughs> Uh, always looking forward to the weekend. Now, before we dive into your current work, I actually wanted to ask you, can you talk about a couple of other projects you might have done in the past? Yes, um, I did a work together with my now wife when I met her in 2000 in, in Austria. Uh, we started photographing each other in quite intimate settings and this work became our first combined body of work with the work titled Body Biography, which was shown in the gallery in Strasbourg in France in 2001. I then created a book with these pictures, which I called Email Love, since it also includes parts of our email exchange during our transatlantic long distance relationship. And now I'm looking back and I'm so happy to have these pictures because as a young boy, I never liked to be photographed and uh, the same way I didn't like to be voice recorded, but I overcame this shyness and now I can enjoy a picture like this that you see behind me when I got my first camera from my father when I was about nine years old. Can you talk a little bit about Children of Fire and sort of its story. Yeah, it's it's kind of a sad story. Uh, we had a house fire that occurred on Easter night in 2016. Linda was actually in the house and I was in New York City in our studio. And I got a phone call at three o'clock in the morning from a neighbor. And Linda said, uh, I'm safe, but we have a little fire. And I didn't believe in this little fire. I took the first bus out of New York and I realized it was a total loss. And in the days following the fire, we lived in a nearby Ramada hotel and started going through the ashes. And we put everything recognizable into storage units, cleaned before and after, took showers at the hotel and kept busy. So that was a good therapeutic approach. Then while digging through the remains, I found burnt slide holders. I was curious, of course, uh, but I saw the former content was mostly unrecognizable. I cut the slides out using a box cutter and sorted them by not interesting looking, too damaged to even being scanned and give it a try. So dealing with such a loss, I became aware of what is replaceable and what is not. But Linda survived. That was all that mattered at that time and the rest is lost and found. Your series, Children of Fire, is numbered. So when we look at number yeah. one, was it the first completed? If not, is there a reason it's at the beginning of the series? And do you think it sets a tone for all the children that follow? Yes, so uh, first thing is, I wanted to count them uh, just by numbers because I didn't want to give you any suggestion of what you would, should, are uh, supposed to think about what you see. So I just did an, an old technique, you know, I just number them and I did actually saw the child number one as the picture that made me start doing this body of work. It stood out, it has very strong colors and a very structural composition and I had a very strong emotional rep response to it. You see, there is a, a whole part of black in it and this represents the ashes for me. The red is the symbol of fire, of anger, of uh, blood, of high emotion and the bubbles in there uh, can stand for water. So I reacted to this right away and I was convinced that this would become a body of work. And it's a starting point in the disaster as well as in the recovery. 
this series has been exhibited in a few other places and yes. two in the series, um, number one, which we just talked about, as well as number four, are often kind of paired together in close proximity, side by side, even sharing a frame. Uh, what is the significance of their kind of partnership, their joint display? For me, this child number one stands for the forces that produced the whole series and child number four was kind of an end product of this uh, process. So you see, uh, although I start with number one, the rest doesn't need to be placed chronologically. But for me, the number one and the number four are two end points of a, of a recovery period, of a period of mourning, suffering, working it through. So where you see the ashes and the fire and the anger in, 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 in the child number one, you see a cleaned up, more calm, uh, white object in, in, a, in a surrounding that reminds you of the journey through, but it resolved a lot of, let's say, bad emotions, anger, and all these things that you have to deal with in a, in a disaster like this. And then, of course, uh, when I play with the orientation of the children. Uh, sometimes I just need to rotate them to have the best and strongest impact when paired with another one. So these are two vertical pictures. They both have kind of an object in the lower half. Uh, I feel they are quite complementary. Some of the children appear to be kind of logically products of fire, considering they have very warm palettes, warm colors, um, and others are infused more with cool colors. Uh, can you explain maybe how this phenomenon happened? Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Uh, look, uh, when you look at it logically, physically, chemically, psychologically, emotionally, uh, you approach a visual phenomena from complete different aspects. For a photographer or a visual artist, the perspective, uh, the warm colors like yellow, orange, red are physically produced by rather cool temperatures of the fire. The hotter the fire, the bluer the flames. And the same thing is true for sunlight. So a photographer needs to know that when they shoot at full sunlight during the day, the colors become very cool. Although temperature wise, you feel it might be the hottest uh, part of the day. Then psychologically, red stands for high emotion, fire, blood. And since I did not plan on the colors because each slide's color is rather what it was, what it is, I did not manipulate the colors. The question how it happened is a more scientific question, which means different film emulsions have different chemicals to produce through the development the right color in a conventional photograph. But these chemical reactions are taking place usually under control temperatures, usually around 68 Fahrenheit. But my children of fire were born under uncontrolled influence of fire and water. So the colors that were produced were kind of random or at least out of my control. The Children of Fire obviously used to kind of represent other photographs and something that I know that um, you're going to go into a little bit more. Um, what happened if you, when coming across one of your children, you kind of saw something else depicted in there? Yeah, it's um, when you said these uh, children represent something, uh, what I try to do is only choose the children, the pictures that did not represent anything else but what you actually see. So if there was something in it, be it from the content that I uh, captured in the earlier photograph 
or something that reminded me of something. Whatever it is, I tried to erase these thoughts, these connections. And the best thing is you rotate the picture until this uh, association disappears. And if it doesn't disappear, then it's not the best picture for me. So they do not represent anything else. They are just what you see and what I see as the, the one who is the first one looking at the pictures. You know, I am learning by looking at my own pictures, about the pictures, and of course, about myself. Another striking quality of this series is the amount of texture. Can you give your artistic perspective of what those textures inspire in the viewers? First of all, um, it inspires me, since, as I said, I am the first viewer and I react to textures, which is uh, who I am. Uh, when I look at paintings, I love to touch paintings, although I'm not supposed to do that, you know, uh, they say, don't touch the artwork, let the artwork touch you. But it's not easy for me to separate these two directions of communication with art. So when I'm in a museum, I see the guards already watching me. Um, so I keep my hands to myself. And once I was at, a, at an auction and I saw somebody else touching a, a painting and I said to him, how can you do that? And he said, uh, relax. I am the potential buyer. I can do what I want to do as long as I don't, of course, destroy the art. These textures are like building stones in my pictures, also in other photographs. In your artist statements, you talk about how your children of fire are survivors of heartbreak. Can you tell us how you feel viewers should see that message, survivors of heartbreak, and ultimately what you want them to come away feeling after viewing the series? Mm, yeah, uh, usually uh, I want uh, the viewers of, of my pictures to be uplifted. Uh, I want them to enjoy what they see because uh, experiencing, discovering the world through looking, through watching is what I'm supporting with my art. Um, and usually the viewers initially like this work but then they get very shocked when they hear the story behind. You know, they ask me, how do you create a picture like this? And I say, yeah, it's uh, kind of easy. You take a photograph with a slide film in an old uh, style camera. Then you put these slides in your house, burn down your house and look what the fire did. So they are shocked and I am shocked always when I say and tell this story, but it's a way for me to recover from it. And then when we turn back to the pictures and we see uh, how beautiful they look, they feel relief and I feel relief. So I become a companion with other viewers of my pictures. Of all of your works, do you have a favorite or one you have a particular attachment to? Child number one and number four are uh, very strong favorites. But the first one I actually printed or had printed because my printer burned uh, was child number six. And I got uh, at the East Village uh, print shop, I got a 16 by 20 print. And uh, it is really beautiful to me. Uh, because it looks like a jewel, it looks like a gemstone, it looks like a, a, an Edelstein. And uh, when you think about uh, these natural forces like heat, fire and pressure actually create diamonds. So I had, of course, knowing what happened before, I had this strong connection of this being a very precious diamond and it's uh, on a back of a uh, more like royal cloth. It has this reddish, uh, pinkish uh, background, like, like a presentation, a royal presentation of something very precious. We're kind of thinking also now to the future, especially since Children of Fire was produced in a very 
you under unique and extenuating circumstances, mm -hmm. tragic circumstances, but you're obviously still working and taking photographs. Um, how has the COVID-19 pandemic um, impacted your work? Has it reshaped your process in any way? Um, it's not the process, but as an older person, I'm not going out so often, but I'm still going out. I keep on shooting because that's what I do. I am working uh, at the moment a little bit closer to my neighborhood, which is uh, southern New Jersey, and I'm uh, finding houses that are dilapidated but still inhabited. Uh, but this area is so overwhelmed with modern new settlements and strip malls that I think these places might disappear and I want to conserve them. So this body of work I call rural ruination uh, because there are ruins and nobody is is keeping up holding them uh, in a good estate so they will eventually disappear be flattened and replaced by a, by a mall so um, and while I'm saying this I realize I had an older body of work which is related to it. I called it American Temples, and I'm showing buildings of diners and fast food places between New York City and Tom's River along Route 9, more or less, always at midnight and new moon, so when the surrounding is dark and these places are lit in their respective colors. So they are like uh, candle houses, I think you have that in, in, in America too, you know, where you have a, a house made out of a carton and paper and, and you cut out the, the, the windows and you put a candle in and it glows from the inside, but it also is lit from the outside. So I call this American Temples. Uh, this became a show in Cologne in Germany a couple of years ago. So it looks like I'm uh, continuing this work, finding places that I think are worth to be remembered. Thank you so much, Lothar. Um, I do not have any more questions. If there's anything else okay. you'd like to add that you might have thought of during the interview, you can go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thankful uh, to the gallery uh, that I was able and I'm still able to show my work there because as an, as an artist, you know, um, you live from the applause. You live like like the musician. Uh, that's your best bread and butter you can get most of the time. And if people enjoy my pictures and can see them and maybe even can give a feedback, uh, that makes me absolutely happy. Well, we are absolutely happy to showcase your work. And Thank if you. you look in the video description, you can look and see where to see more of Lothar's work, um, both on his own website, as well as at the Alpha. Um, thank you very much uh, once again, Lothar, for speaking with us today, sharing your insight, um, and just giving us more to think about when we're viewing your work. Yeah. Thank you for your kind questions.